So we're wanting to just look at um, really just understanding the standards and was what we were going to look at, um, how important it is for to get teacher clarity of knowing the standards. Um, and then this, the reason why that it brought to our attention is the the teacher project did the study, and what they came up with is that um, kids this were doing what they were asked to do in the classroom. They were making straight A's, they were doing all this stuff, but then when they got in real life, they were not being successful. And they so what's wrong with that? And so, um, oh, go ahead, girl, sorry. Um, so what was happening is they, they, that's what caused them to do the research because they, all of this stuff was, they, you know, what, what, what was the missing piece of what was happening? So what was happening is that um, they found these four key resources that had the influence of the student outcome. And you, it was like writing probably assignments. So, you know, they weren't, it, they weren't rigorous enough. And um, a lot of times if you go and at the end of the day, the teacher is worn out because they stood up and talked and did all this stuff on there. The kids are still wild because they haven't exert, exerted any energy. We all know mental energy requires you out more than physical. So you want to turn that thinking on to them, let the students do the work. And so, and then the deep engagement, and then of course high expectations. So I'm going to go, um, so these are just a few quotes that I had in there, and just to, just because, but like I said, we're going to kind of go through a little bit quick. But um, this is from John Hattie. He does all like the effectiveness of programs and things like that. But the key to improving school is that for uh, the the teachers, you guys have to know what those expectations are. You guys have to understand the standards and the success criteria. And um, the best way to do that is in your PLCs if you have um, some better teachers and for somebody in your building that's willing to kind of take you under their wing and help you and guide you, they are will be a tremendous resource. Uh, I had one when I first started and it, would, it made a world of difference. Uh, and this one right here, and I made this a different color just to, because I want to make it, because this is kind of the whole point of today, is if the teacher's unclear about what the students must be able, be able to do, then there's no way the students are going to know what they need to be able to do. So it's really important that you understand the standard. Uh, I was going to have you guys think a little bit about where, how, much you, you know, how much you have in understanding of the standard. Um, but we don't have time. <laughs> um, but when you look at understanding the depth of the standard and what all that the kid has to have uh, to make that standard, to get those desired results, you're going to teach or begin with the end in mind. So you're, it's kind of like a backward design, a backward model. So the backward design is you look at the standard and then you look at your learning outcome. And then how are you going to assess it? And then the last thing that you want to do is design your activities and what you're going to do with your lesson. Typically, the traditional design is you look at your standard, then you're like, oh, I want to do this, and I want to do this, and this, and this to teach it, and then I'm going to assess it, and then the learning outcome is last. So if we look at first our learning outcome, what do we want our students to know? and work backwards, then we're going to make sure that they get everything that they need to know. And so here's some questions that you ask yourself when you're looking at the, um, for the students to know. So the first thing that you do is identify the results, okay? So when you're looking at that, when you read your standard, um, it says, what do my students need to know and be able to do? And I have no else. Oh, I got some the schedule on the curl and I got much notes and everything. Thank you. I had structured notes for you guys to take the too. And then when I realized I apologize. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so you, after you read your statement, what do they need to know? Um, 
and then how are they going to be able to demonstrate it, and then how are my students going to learn what they need to know? Okay, so what do they, what do they need to know? How do I know that they know it? And how, what am I going to do? How are they going to practice it to get there? So then you have your driving questions when you meet your PLCs. These are just some questions that you guys can talk about and discuss on how to get those desired results. And I'm going to go ahead and go through that because I want to get here because this is kind of the, the, the bulk of what we need to talk about. So this is how um, we're going to talk about how to break down that standard. So the first one up here is the guiding principle. And if you notice, when you look at the standards, uh, those at the top, and it's got that little graduation cap. So what that is, is that is what they need to be able to do once they graduate the 12th grade. So even in your first K-1 standards, you're going to have that guiding principle because ultimately this, like this is um, a fifth grade example, and this is what we're going to do in the fifth grade, but ultimately that is what we want is the guiding principle. So that's what we're working toward. The next one is the progression. This is probably, not probably, this is my favorite part of the whole standard because, you know, you'll have this, the middle piece is where is the current grade level. And then you're going to have the grade before and then the grade after that shows what they need, the prerequisite skills that they needed beforehand and then the, what they need now. Okay, so especially now, you know, always before you're even, you're going to have kids on um, all different levels in your classroom, and then um, even kids that are not, that do not have IEPs, they're still not going to be where they need to be, especially now with all that we've went through. So you're going to have a big challenge on trying to reach all those kids. So in my opinion, so I think that's where your progression is going to be your best friend. I um, have pulled out because my I do have mine is a special ed background, so of course my kids were never on grade level. So what I would do is I just pulled out the progressions. I'm old school. I love my paper copy, but you can go back all the way back to it and lead up to that. So for example, with this one, this is five point one. Quote accurately from a text when explaining what the text says explicitly and when drawing inferences. So I could go back here and keep going back and then, oh, and this is the literature. And my, my child, or I have a couple children that are nowhere near that. So I can just pull this out as a reference and I can kind of skim back and say, well, they can't do that. Um, and I'm like, okay, 2.1 says, ask and answer such questions as who, what, when, where, why, and how, and support that logical inferences. Okay, well, that's probably where I need to start because they can't do that. But they, you know, they, they can do the first grade, but right here is where they need to start. So that's how, where your progressions are going to come in. And they do, that is aligning with the standard. That's sometimes that gets confused because like, um, especially because you guys are responsible for your grade level content. But you have to back up and get those foundational pieces and you're like, well, it doesn't align, it doesn't align. It does because you're doing, you're doing the standard, but you're doing the 2.1. And then you might, and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to teach all three grade levels. Many times, if a student likes just one specific skill, a discrete skill we call it, if you can fill in and they develop that small skill, then some of the, all the others will kind of fall into place. So you can back up and go to your 2.1 and then they have, it, it aligns. So I love the progression. And then the last thing is the multidimensionality of the standard. And what that does is this one really breaks it down for you. Uh, it talks about the maroon piece is the content. So that's just the, the beef of it, what they have to know. The green is the level of comprehension. You know, there's how, how deep is it? 
And so with this one, they have to be able to explain it. And then the purple is analysis, and that's to what extent. So they're going to explain what the text, explain the text, but they're drawing inferences. So when they're drawing inferences, that takes it to a different level. And so when it's broken down like that, what that does is it just makes sure that it draws your attention that you get all pieces of that standard. Because sometimes um, when uh, what may happen is that, okay, yeah, I, they, can, they can tell me what happens in the text. Okay, well, what if, if it's a situation, you know, what they didn't address the inferencing part, which is a whole different level. It's a whole level of, um, it just the inferencing is just a whole other intellectual level. It's a whole other skill that's not been developed. So, and then, um, so that's how, that's how it just brings your attention to that. There's my progressions. Okay. Um, what I was going, what I had planned to do, um, and I don't know, I just don't know about time. But uh, the taper that you guys have, this right here, uh, the purpose of the activity is for you to just to really be, be able to get into the standards and break them down and understand what the, what the standards are wanting you to do. And what I had planned for you guys to do is to work in groups, pick a standard of your grade level, work through that and answer this, just go ahead and break it down on this sheet. So let me go ahead and kind of talk through things and then we'll see where time is and then Maybe we'll see because I'd like for you all to do this, but it, it does take a little bit of a time. Now, um, when I've done this before, I had a question because it takes like if you take one standard, I mean, it takes we took 15 minutes and we didn't get finished with it. Now, um, and it's like, am I going to have to do this for every single standard that I do because you know I've got so all these standards I'm going to cover? The answer is no. The point of this activity is like what we do for our kids. This is like a graphic organizer. So you're going to go through, and what this does is the point of graphic organizers is to guide your thinking, create, create, create your thinking processes. So this is a graphic organizer for teachers. And once you go through and look at each one of these and answer the questions on the paper, then eventually, when you read through the standards, when you're planning your lessons, you're going to be able to, do, you will do that automatically. And this this kind of trains you on what to look for and what you need to, um, uh, like how to think through those standards when you're doing it. So eventually, I mean, you will not have to do this for every single thing. I mean, it's not possible because you've got so much to do, there's no way. Um, the, if you notice, the uh, graphic organizer is laid out just like our standards. It's got the guiding principle, the top, and the progressions, and things like that. So that is that activity. So we'll go on, and then we'll see where we're at on time. And then I have a, a, a fifth grade level example, and then this is a high school one. Can I just say something? The reason why we have people who break down the standard is just to get you to really understand all the components that you need inside the standard for what you're teaching. So once you've done two or three or four of these, you're really understanding what's being asked in that standard. But it gets you thinking the next time you do your lesson plans and those kind of things about what do I really need to make sure is available for my students based on that standard. And so you start really changing your thinking. So now that now you go through that activity and you're like, okay, I get it. I understand the standards. I have I have clarity of what I need my kids to do. Now, once you have the understanding, how are you going to transfer that information to your students? Okay, so they have these three questions a lot of times. You tell them to do something, and you know, why am I doing this? What are we gonna do this for? You know, that, that kind of. But they need to know that. So, you know, what am I learning? If, um, how, how do we, or, well, let me ask you this. Have you all taught, like, are you, have you been in the classroom yet? Or are you just tired? Okay. So, how do you guys 
let your students know what they are learning. How do we do that? Or how do you do that? I can statements. Yep. That's any any other ideas or any other ways that you guys use it. Okay. Yeah. So I can statements, learning targets, whatever they're called. It depends on where you, where you <laughs> teach. Um, it's but yeah. That's exactly what that is. So it would be like your learning goal. Uh, the thing about that is, the, I think the big thing is just the consistency, which I'm sure you all have. Is like sometimes it's a, either like the school or the issue. Just make sure that everybody's using the same terminology, because you don't want to be using I can statements and I'm using a learning target. And you're using a learning goal. You know, just it's, there's it's too much for kids to know. But so basically, it's their learning goal. They need to know what what they're going to be learning today. Okay, so then the next one is why. Why am I learning this? Why is it important to me? Okay, and I think sometimes this is, and when I uh, was early in the t in the classroom, that was the one thing that I probably was did overlooked a little bit. Is I told them what they were going to learn, and um, but I didn't really give them um, relevance. And if they find relevance and they, what, if they can find a connection and think that it's important to them, then that will help them because if we're like that as humans, it's like if, if we don't find any value in something, then we don't want to do it. But if we we can relate to it and know that it's valuable to us, then we're going to be more, um, have more, um, be more apt to want to do it. So it's the same thing with kids. And a lot of times with relevance, we want to Sometimes you can relate it to a life experience, but it doesn't, it's not always going to be that. Some things that we have to teach them, you cannot relate it to a big life experience. If you can, great. But sometimes it might be as meaningful as, uh, for example, if I'm going to teach um, decoding for phonics, okay, if I got kids that really can't do the letter sound and they can't blend. They can't link act together. Well, I'm going to have to back up and see, go back to the phonemic awareness and do sounds and just doing segmenting and blending. I'm going to take the letters away and then I'm just going to have them doing those sounds. So I'll tell them the relevance for this is I'm going to say, okay, guys, you're, we're going to practice these sounds so that you guys can learn how to blend just the sounds together and be able to take those sounds apart, the word, and take the sounds apart, so that because if you know the sounds, then that's going to lead you, you're going to be able to read and spell later. So your relevance of having to go through these sounds is to be able to read and speak. And then how do I know that I've learned it? And that's the success criteria, and, and uh, that could be like your writing, it could be uh, like your rubrics and things like that. Or just, uh, and this is a good way, I'm getting ahead of myself, but because we're going to know what each of those mean and what that's going to look like. So you're going to have learning goals, relevance, and success criteria. So your learning goals are what? And it's like the a destination. Like this is this is where you're going to go. This is where it's going to be your ending thing. And it's like I said, the targets and things like that. Um, this is your why. You gotta have a why. Gotta, it's gotta be important to them. And then the success criteria is how. How am I gonna get there? So, like, uh, your learning goal is your destination. So, your six success criteria could be like the map to the destination. So, um, how are we gonna get there? Your goals, when you when you think about that, is or your criteria is make sure that, that you can measure, you know, how, like, I want to know, I'm going to do this so my students, so that I know my students know it, but make sure you can measure it. Um, because even if you're doing a teacher observation, then make sure that you have a checklist or whatever that you're, look what you're looking for, and you can say, yeah, she answered five out of ten questions correctly. So that's your measure. Make sure it's measurable. And make sure it matches, go back to the standard of what you're wanting to learn. 
And then this one is a big one, uh, is show them some examples of what the finished product would look like, um, it, whether it be a project that you're doing or a writing, if it's a, a piece of writing or, or whatever you're doing, give them some examples and also of what good um, writing looks like and then also some non-examples and that will help them too. Okay, so let's think just a little bit. Um, what do you, what have you done or what can you do to help those students understand the learning? Like now that you uh, understand the standard, what do you guys think? What are some things that we can do to help our students understand it? Except just tell them, other than tell them. What do you think? Okay, the first thing would be tasks. Give them activities and tasks to do that align to the goal of the criteria. Okay, so when they're doing those, that's how they know that they're more that you can develop that understanding. And then it is questioning. So now, one of the things, you know how when I, earlier I said that at the end of the day, if you're going and you're talking and doing the whole thing, just kind of like I'm doing right now, I'm going to be worn out at the end of the session. And then if you talk all day, then your kids are still wild because they're just, they haven't exerted any mental energy. Okay, so with this, instead of um, telling them everything, ask them questions. So, for example, if I come in and I say, okay, guys, yesterday, uh, when we, at the beginning of reading class, we went over being able to blend sounds together and we went over how to segment sounds. And when we did at and that my cat, we were, we were blending them. And then we also made that sound of we made it associated that with the letter C. That's what we did yesterday. So instead of you just telling them everything, then you come in and say, okay guys, can anybody tell me what we worked on yesterday? You put the thinking on them, which goes back to the what we mentioned earlier about those expectations and getting the engagement. Okay, because with some students, even your ones that try so hard to pay attention, if I say this, oh yeah, we did this yesterday, they're going to automatically tell me out. Well, we did it yesterday. Why don't I have to hear it again? But okay, so what what did we do yesterday? And then I said, okay, we did some blending. Okay, can you give me an example of something that we did yesterday? So just turn it back on them. Okay, and then examples, uh, examples of student work, and then uh, that's just had, uh, like what kind of goes back to the what I had mentioned earlier, the examples and non examples. And then also, this is kind of cool, and what like goes back to the progress monitoring. And, okay, now it says provide a range of work to show how they pro progressed over time. Now, do you have to keep a folder and keep everything that they have done the whole school year? No, that's not what I'm saying. But it is kind of cool to see um, how a kid can do something in August, and then you you know, they, and then you have something that they do a little bit more later in the year. And especially when you show parents, um, like for example, with me, I had, um, I did reading and writing, okay? So I would have some writing examples, and I did like a little quick write at the beginning, and I'd have them just write whatever. And so in August, they would have maybe not even a complete sentence. And then by the end of the year, they may, it may only be, you know, three or four sentences, but if we did not have that piece from August to look at, because if they say three or four sentences, oh, he's in the fifth grade and he only wrote three or four sentences. Yeah, but look in August, he only, he didn't even get a complete sentence in the same amount of time. So it's kind of cool to show how that, because students don't realize either how much they progress, and you can bring it to their attention and they come through like, I was doing a reading lesson and it was like a 30 minute block. And of course I didn't have 30 minutes because I had to go get them and I had to take them back. So it's like 20, 25 minutes. And I was never getting through a lesson. And one day, 
And it, but of course, because they were having to read aloud and do all this stuff, well, we had gotten all the way to the end of the lesson in the same amount of time that I had been doing it for weeks. And I was so excited. And I was like, guys, do you realize what just happened? I mean, they were clueless. And I was like, okay, we did this today. Do you remember just a few weeks, and this was fifth grade. I said, do you remember just a few weeks ago, we didn't even get to this section. And not only did we get to this section, but you all read it all the way to the end. Do you know what that means? I said, that means that you are reading better and you are more fluent. You are doing so much better. And then, of course, they were, you know, being them, and they were so excited. So those kind of things is so important for kids because then, after that, then they're going to hurry and get in there because they wanted to keep and see if they can finish it again and do it again. So it was so cool. And then, of course, the non-examples. So all of those are for um, student understanding. Now, uh, now that you know, you have clarity of the standard yourself, and now you know how to show the students what they need to know. What do you do with that information now? Okay, so now what you do is you have to determine the skills they need. You know what the standard is. You know the students know what the standards are. How do you determine what they need? So when you break this down, and we're not going to have time to do it, but when you're breaking uh, this right here, and I know you guys are regular ed teachers, um, but this is still beneficial for you. I mean, you could ignore the goal for the IEP, but the first two boxes at the top, what that does is once you break that down, then you say, okay, what skill is needed to meet that standard? And you have to think real specific, okay? So if we're talking, um, you know, if they're having to do, um, what was it, the quote the, from inferencing, you know, the 5.1, what the text from inferencing. What are some skills that they have to know to be able to do that? And with my special ed background, mine's always like I'll be able to read it <laughs> first. <laughs> you know. So what what else? Have to be able to understand it. Have to be able to understand what they're reading. So how are they going to how do we know that they understand it? By what I'm questioning. Okay, they got to be able to understand it, and they have to be able to know um, the different parts of the text. Right. You know, they have to know what the setting is. They have to know parts of the, of the story. So they have to know all of those things. So it kind of just gets you thinking, like thinking, you know, really specific skills. And you're going to put it right here in the first box. And then you're going to see, okay, this is what all students need to know to meet the standard. Now, this is on um, this box is what skills do my students lack? Okay, and this is where I gave you this, and you can see how far back you need to go with your progressions to meet it. Okay, um, and then of course, you know, inferring is the big level. So if I know that they can't go to if there's a question here, like where, you know, where did Tom find the ball? And it literally says in the text that Tom found the ball in the garage. And if they cannot do that, we know they're not going to be able to infer because they literally cannot find it. So we're, we're going to know that. And we're going to put those kind of things in this box. And then, well, you guys are not going to do that. But what you got, but what you can do then is you take that and then you can break your class up into groups. And then when you do your uh, teacher stations or your individual small groups, then that's when you work on those skills that they're lacking. Now, how do you find, how do you know what your kids know and don't know? How do you know that? Assessments. There you go. Absolutely. Assessments. Real quick, these do not have to be big, lengthy chapters. That, no, just really quick formative assessments is all it needs to be. 
real quick. Okay, I did want to show you, uh, these are some resources that you guys can use um, for, and I mean, it's not just for special ed or, or regular ed, it's for everybody. Um, CDMs, for, I mean, this is, all these are links, some of them are links to uh, sheets, some of them are links to, uh, to websites. When you go to these, uh, you will have to create an account, but they're free. Like Easy CDM, if you guys aren't familiar with that one yet, just set up with the email password and it takes you in there and shows you all kinds of stuff. Um, and then I actually might put it. Yeah, so you go here and I do want to take them. Are you all familiar with it before I go into it? Okay, well you need you need to be. So I'm gonna take the time to do that. I love it. 
one minute. As a special ed teacher who had to, uh, to do that for when we needed, you know, checks and fluency those, this makes it much easier to be able to have all those copied real quick and I laminated them so kids had to have laminated copy and then I had the assessor copy and we went through and we were able to just check them very quickly and there was, you know, it was, it was already progress monitoring and done an inspection very quickly for reading. Like I said, I don't recommend it for math because in math I'm looking for a specific skill. And when they print off theirs in math, it's got like everything to their grade level, basically, every time. And I don't need that. I need a specific skill. Like I need multiplication for their grade. And I don't need to have division or addition, uh, you know, three digit addition, whatever it may be, because that's all on math. But for reading, it is phenomenal. Yeah, it's good. But this is another uh, resource for you guys. I love it. It's called readworks.org. And are you all familiar with this? Okay, this one will help you um, if you need reading passages. Uh, you can search it, you can go to content, and whatever you're looking for, if you're looking for passages or articles, you click your grade level and your topic if you want, you know, whatever. Uh, Nonfiction, fiction. You go to grade level, and it will give you these articles, and it reads, if they have their own uh, vocabulary, I've I read that, <laughs> if uh, they have their own Chromebook, then it reads to them, if you want it, you know, if you want to do that, and uh, it has questions at the end and vocabulary words as well. So I love this. And then the other one is Intervention Central. Does anybody are you familiar with that one? That one's these are th these are three websites made for your book level. Um, I, this is good. Um, I mean I had it linked to the, the written expression generator just because just because but this is for, I'll, I'll take you to the home page. It's uh, interventioncentral.org. Okay, so if you go at the top, it will show you the academic interventions and there's also behavior interventions as well. You can click on, uh, let's see, so. It, that's that's articles for like it's talking about flashcards and things like that. But so it had this is like a planner for academics, and then it has your what it is, it has direction, it, and there's a link there that says click here for the full intervention, and then it tells you how to do it and things like that. Um, over here on the side is like is a generator. So like um, if you want a reading fluency passage generator, so if there's if there's a story or words that they need to know that you're working on, you can plug them in here and make your own and print it out for them. And that's that's probably my favorite feature of this website. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, this was just an example. I wanted to show you like a talk about a, a checklist. That's I, that's always been my favorite. Uh, when I talk about formative assessments, I always had a clipboard and I just went and just check, check, check. And a lot of times um, I would use just a regular uh, notebook paper and then just write down whatever. Because if that part was not pretty, then I went and plugged it in. So it, any way that you just can get it down to get your... Uh, So then, and then what I was going to do is let you, after y'all broke down the standard, is actually complete that to feel out to see the skills. Uh, so basically, what I, 
uh, I guess just a couple takeaways is that uh, to be able to just understand how to read the standard, the different components, how to break it down, what to look for, and the important pieces are to make sure that they get that, uh, the whole standard, the skills they needed uh, to meet the whole, all of it. And then also, um, like you said, how to, how to find it, get those assessments, how to find it, and use the progression to meet them on that. So that was, I hope that's kind of what we went through. Um, like I said, normally we do, we are more active, so I, I usually don't like to sit here, but, um, <laughs> but we're flexible, right? That's what we do. And do you guys have any questions or comments or anything about reading or standards?